Ola Bini, a friend of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, was required to remain in jail on Thursday in his appeal for release from an Ecuadorian prison. Bini, a cybersecurity expert, has been in prison since April 11, the day that Ecuador revoked Julian Assange's asylum at the Ecuadorian embassy in London. Prosecutors have vaguely accused Bini of hacking Ecuadorian government computers, but have not filed any specific charges against him. An appeals panel of the provincial court in Quito ruled in a two-to-one decision and after three hours of deliberation that Bini must remain in prison while the investigation against him continues. Prosecutors argue that Bini represents a flight risk and could interfere in the investigation. Bini's lawyers, Carlos Soria and Jose Chari Davalos, reacted to the ruling as follows. This is an embarrassment, dear journalists. My client, our client, is an innocent person who has contributed to the entire world on matters of privacy, of information, and now because he is a friend of Julian Assange or because he travels a lot. Three hours of deliberation and the court's majority opinion still couldn't tell us what are the charges or how the elements of the detention are enough. Simply justifying preventative prison with the supposed jurisprudence that was never named, supposed sentences that were never cited, and supposed juridical rules that were also never named. This isn't enough. It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. When the Ecuadorian government had revoked Julian Assange's asylum and kicked him out of the embassy in London on April 11th, they also had a friend of his arrested, Ola Bini, who was living in Ecuador. He was arrested the same day. The Ecuadorian government accuses Ola Bini, who is a Swedish citizen, of helping Assange to hack Ecuadorian government computers, including President Moreno's telephone. Bini's friends and family vehemently denied that he would be involved in such activities since he's a well-known defender of digital privacy. Joining me now from Quito, Ecuador, to discuss the case is Ola Bini's parents, Dag Gustafsson, his father, and Gorel Bini, his mother. Thanks for joining us today. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. First of all, let me begin by saying how sorry I am that you're undergoing these horrible and terrifying circumstances with your son uh, being held in this way. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, uh, Dag, let me go to you first here. Last tweet we saw from Ola is that uh, he was going to leave to go to Japan to do some training. Uh, he was excited. Uh, he, he had never been to Japan. Um, he was just doing his normal day's work, heading out to do some training. Um, tell us what exactly happened to him. What exactly happened is when he got to the airport and um, checked in and went to the gate where he should leave from, he was arrested by the police. They took him aside and, uh, yeah, took him. So. Oh. Took him. Now, uh, when did you discover that uh, he was arrested and uh, and now you find yourself in, in Quito, Ecuador? Um, how did you come to know that he was arrested? Because Ola had had a little time before they took his phone to send text messages to a couple of his friends. And these friends very fast spread the news that Ola has been arrested. So. Late at evening, Thursday night, home in Sweden, uh, Ola's former wife called us and told us what has happened. So we knew it after a couple of hours, what ha what's happened. All right, now you've had a chance to visit with Ola, um, and do we know the charges that he's been charged with by the Ecuadorian government? What is he accused of? No, as far as the information we got from his lawyer, it's very vague. It's some kind of data intrusion, some kind of hacking of the president's phone, but there has not been a precise accusation made from the prosecutor. So he don't know 
what crime he is supposed to have been doing and how it should have been done, where or when. So it's very vague. All right. Now, um, Goral, you can answer this. Um, what do we know about uh, Ola's relationship with Assange? Were they working together? Um, uh, what is the connection? No, they were friends, just friends. OK. And, uh, and just by virtue of being his friend, he has been arrested. There must be some uh, trail of uh, activity leading to uh, Ola. Um, do we know or had they mentioned any of this uh, to warrant an arrest of this sort? No, they haven't mentioned that at all, I believe. Uh, okay. And just being a friend to Assange shouldn't be a crime, I believe. Yeah. And what was uh, Ola doing in Ecuador? Um, he's a Swedish citizen, but was he... Uh, working in Ecuador? Yes. He's lived here for six years, I believe, and uh, working. Uh, he he started working in uh, ThoughtWorks when he came here. And then he, uh, he had started uh, with a non-profit organization called CAD uh, right for a few months ago, I believe. Yes, mm -hmm. from the start of this year. Yeah. T t tell us about the organization that he has built and why he needed to be in Ecuador to do that work. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, he started and building up this organization based on what he's passionate about, and that's that's the digital aspects of uh, human rights and freedom of speech on the internet. He's very active on that and that is his passion to make the internet working better for in privacy courses and so on that we ordinary people could yeah speak communicate have freedom of speech on the internet without risk risking to be overheard from organizations and governments and so on so that is basically what this organization is working with. So in terms of uh, Ola's case here, what are the next steps? What are you waiting for? You're obviously waiting for his release, but what are the conditions that they're placing uh, on him before he could be released? Next step is uh, now Saturday, uh, Thursday, 2nd of May, because then there is going to be a new hearing. Um, the first hearing was, uh, I don't know the English word, but overruled by his lawyer. And therefore, there's a new one happening now, the 2nd of May. And our hope is, of course, that the judge will take under consideration the actual evidences. The evidences that they have is a book of Noam Chomsky, a couple of USB sticks, and a couple of computers. There's no witness of any crime being done. And as I said earlier, it has not been specified exactly what the crime he was supposed to have been doing. So there is no legal ground for Ola to be in prison. So of course, he should be released on Thursday. And is there any uh, message that Ola asked you to communicate with the world? Yes. I don't know if I have the words right now, but he has been communicating from the prison out on social media on different places. Uh, one with the headline, the most important thing. And that, that is something quite good, I think. Uh, what he means by that is he had a friend that once said, what are you doing right now? Are you doing the most important thing you can do? If not, why are you not doing that? And that is one of the things that led Ola into this privacy work on the internet because he realized with his skills and abilities 
he finds that's the most important thing he could do for, uh, for mankind, really. And he said that he will continue to do that yeah. when he get out. All right. Um, I thank you so much for joining us today and uh, letting us into the life uh, of Ola Bini and also uh, what you're experiencing there. And I wish you all the best in trying to get him out of prison. Thank you. Thank you. I was speaking with Dag Gustafsson and Gorel Bini, the parents of Ola Bini, who has been arrested uh, two weeks ago in Ecuador in connection with the revocation of Julian Assange's asylum in London. I thank you all for joining us here on The Real News Network.